Hi everyone, this is Colleen with Designs of Value Art School. And today we're going to talk about wet into wet technique. And I know you've probably seen quite a few different videos on this, but I'm going to take you step by step and give you some really in-depth value on how and why I use the wet on wet technique in all, everything that I paint. So we're going to start with this rose. I've chosen three different petals that we're going to be doing and I'm choosing colors here and I'm looking for this light pink and I think we're going to do and that's straight um, quinacridone magenta so that's our light value I'm just going to write that down on our color map here and this is our practice chip so we can make sure that the colors are going to be what we're looking for. So this is watered down quinacridone magenta. And then our darker color is actually Helios purple and just a touch of neutral tint. So that's Helios purple plus a touch of neutral tint. And that's our darker color. So that's going to work. Now, I always have a mixing brush and just an old nylon Royal number 12 flat and then I have a water brush and I don't use the water brush for anything except applying water and to me that is the biggest trick of doing the wet into wet technique this is the blending and glazing medium that I use it's a Windsor and Newton product I add it right to my water I always try to keep my water fresh and clean. That's very important. Otherwise, you're bringing colors into the other colors into the mix if it's not clean, and you don't want to do that. So I've got my blending and glazing medium in my water. I'm going to use my water brush. I just have a number six. It's a different color black brush, so I know that it's my strictly my water brush. And the most important thing as far as I'm concerned with the wet on wet is putting and applying your water to the area that you want to use this technique. So applying it in generosity to the center and then taking it out to the edge is a big trick too. So that's real important. And this gives us what I would call our base for our petals for this rose. Now you always want to check the side of the paper so you can see where your water is. I'm getting a puddle down here because my board is at a little bit of a slant so you always want to be aware of that if you're going to have a slanted surface that you're painting on be aware that you're probably going to have a puddle at the bottom of your design so you always want to watch out for that one way to pick up that petal would be to take your water brush dry it off on your I use a a baby diaper, cloth baby diaper, and you can just, once it's dry, use that brush as a sponge to just pick up that puddle. Move it up into the center or wherever you may need it. I seem to need it over here on the side of this puddle. So, this is the first time I've applied water to this paper so I'm going to let that set up for a moment and then I'm going to apply some more water because I want it to really soak into the fiber 
of this paper. And this is just a, a Canson 140-pound cold press. I like the cold press texture. I was a oil painter for many years, and I always try to create this type of a texture. We called it an eggshell finish, so it had some tooth and the oil paint would grab it. So I'm used to this type of a texture, whether it be in oils or watercolors. So now this is soaked in a little bit, so I'm just going to add some more water to it. And again, I find this to be the foundation of all of my paintings. Um, and it's definitely the technique you need to learn to do watercolors, especially botanicals, still lives. Even in a landscape, you're using a wet on wet for your backgrounds. So you need to learn this technique. You need to learn to control the water on your paper. So okay, now I'm going to get my regular brush and not use my water brush. And I'm using a number six and it's a Princeton round. I like to wipe off my ferrule so it's not soaking wet. I've cleaned my brush so I know my brush is clean. And now I'm going to be applying the lightest value and we're doing this petal. We're going to just ignore this area and we're just going to do a, a light in here and light at the tip. So we're going to just apply the light where I want the lightest colors to be. And a lot of this wet into wet is just allowing the paper to do a lot of the work for you. So we're just basically dropping in the light color where we want it. it. Does come up quite a bit from the center here. Now I want it to go to the edge so I'm just going to make sure with the tip of my brush that that paint does get to the edge up here as well. Alright, so there's the first application of paint. Now I'm picking up the darker of the two colors and that's going right through the center. I'm going to actually make that just a little bit darker. which means we're going to add just a touch more of the neutral tint. That's better. You can see it better. I know I can see it better. So we're just dropping it in right in the center of this petal where it needs to be. So now I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to wipe it off a little bit so there's no water on the ferrule. And this is your ferrule, the metal. And we're just going to bring the color from the outside to the inside and then vice versa. Inside to the outside. Get some water down here or a puddle down here. We're just going to let this water do most of the work for us. And I'm just gently bringing those colors together. And as you do this with your brush back and forth to blend these colors together when you're using just the tip like this, think about how the petal grows. Which way are the veins going? That type of thing because that's the way you want to move your brush and in essence at that point then you are creating a little bit of a veining 
technique as you go. Even this early. Now, at this point, I want some highlight on this edge. So all I did was dry wipe my brush so that my brush is drier than the paper and the paint that is on it. And every time I wipe my brush across that paper, I wipe the paint out that I just picked up because otherwise all you're doing I'm just going to blend that in a little bit um, is reapplying the paint you just removed so you pull the paint out wipe it off your brush and pull the paint out so we've got a little bit of a highlight over here I also want a little bit of a highlight over here so this is the point when your paint is starting to dry that you want to remove or lift out that color. There we go. That is your wet on wet technique. Now the most important thing you can do is practice this technique. So this petal next to this is going to be this petal. So we have a highlight up the side, a little bit of a highlight down below, but not at the tip. So let's go back to our water brush. Now we've not used this for anything but water, so there's no paint in it whatsoever. Apply your water right in the center to begin with. Bring it out to the edge. This to me is the important part of wet into wet. If you have your water right where you want it and it's glistening and it's even throughout the petal. That is the biggest trick I can teach you on wet into wet. Okay, I got my first set of waters on there. I'm looking at the side. I can see there's some dry spots up here. So I'm just sweeping the water I have on there to cover my dry spots. See with my board being at a slight angle it does drop down to the bottom so you want to watch that don't want any puddles at this point. So okay, I've got it glistening pretty well right now for the first layer. And I'm going to let that set for a minute. Now I am using the blending and glazing medium and what that does for you is it allows your open time of the paint to let you play with it more. So Otherwise, your water would dry faster without the blending and glazing medium in it. So I like this, especially if you're doing a large item, uh, a long leaf, that type of thing, like a tulip leaf possibly. Gives you more time to play with it, more time to get that detail in there, remove your highlights if need be, all of those things that blending and glazing medium is allowing you to do. And I'm just doing my second coat of water. Okay. Always checking the side to make sure it's right where you want it to be and that you have no puddles. And if you do, sweep it across. 
and get those puddles to go into where you need it to be. Okay, so I'm going to set my water brush aside. I'm going to clean the brush that I was using. And we're going to go for the highlight color first. Which again is up the side here and down below. So we're going to start over here. The rest of this petal is pretty dark. There is a highlight up the middle as well. Like that. And some over here. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush. I am going to dry it off because I don't want to add a lot of water to my paint here. Now we're going to drop in the dark. Where we need that dark to be. Right up on this edge. Now if you needed three values in here, you could certainly do that at this point. Do another dark or another light. Whatever you think your petal needs, you want to add while this is wet. Okay, so I've got the dark in where I want it. I'm going to kind of mix the two together with the water that's on the paper. And again, think about how your petal grows. Is it growing in this fashion? You want to be sure and make your brush strokes as you blend these two together go in the vein direction. Get this right up to the edge. Of where you need the water to be. Okay. So now I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to wipe it off until it is drier. Than the paint on the paper. And I'm going to pick up this edge. It's called Lifting Out Color. And again, each time I do it, I'm wiping the paint off of my brush so I don't redeposit it. Softening it as I go. There is some light down in here. It's a lighter value. It's not white, white but it is lighter. What I'm doing is I'm dry wiping my brush so there's no paint on it and there's no moisture in it. I mean it's damp of course and then I'm just laying my brush down and flattening it so it gets that nice wide highlight out of there, which is what we're looking to do. Okay, there's your second petal. Now let's move on to the third petal. And I've got all these drawn in again, and that's called practice. So you want to continue to practice. Now this could be looked at as two petals. We're going to do it as one. So you've got a fairly dark area in here. It's light over here. It's light up the center and it's light down here. So that's the one we're doing next. So I'm going to clean my brush so it's clean for when I need it. I am going to make some more of that dark color because it's getting a little dry. don't want to run out. So you always want to mix your color before you start to paint your petals. 
or your project or whatever you're painting. Backgrounds. You want to mix your colors first. So there's the dark color. I am going to mix some of the light color too. Pull it over a little bit. There we go. Okay. Grabbing my clean water brush, dropping it into the blending and glazing water. And put that right in the center first. Then I have the capability of doing it in the center first. Then I can take that water that's puddling in the center and move it to the edge as I see fit, which works great. Again, this is the most important step, applying the water. If it's the first time that you're applying water to your paper, I always recommend that you do it twice, just to make sure that that water has absorbed into that paper. If you're doing a glaze of wet on into wet on top of something that's like over here once this was dry, then you would want to just do one water glaze. You would not want to do two. Picking up water as I go where I need it. Checking the side of my paper. to make sure I have it right up to the edge and I don't have any area of, um, dry. If we would leave those dry spots in there, it would not accept any of the paint and it would, would be a white spot there. So that's why it's important to make sure that you've got your entire petal covered right to the edge. I'm always checking the side. There we go. We'll let that set up for a moment and then we'll add some more. And I went over, so I'm going to just wipe that out with my finger. I want a nice, even glaze of water all the way across that petal. Wipe that up one more time to make sure I don't have any overage. Okay. And I set my water brush aside so it's nice and clean for the next time that I use it. Pick up my number six. I know I cleaned it, but I'm going to clean it one more time just to be safe. Going into my lighter color which is going to be right in this area. Just basically dropping that color in where you want it to be lighter. Just letting the water do its thing here. Now I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to pick up my darker color and drop that in. It needs to be darker yet.
get it up close to the edge to begin with and then you can go back in and let the water get it up to the edge. Okay, wipe my brush a little bit and just blend between these two just to get the colors to blend together. Now this is fairly dark so we want to get right up to the edge there. This side does have a lighter side so we're not going to go quite so far there. Clean my brush. Just gently bringing that down. Okay, now I want to pick out my highlights. And I've wiped my brush, making sure there's no water on the ferrule. Wiped it off on the towel. Wiping it off again after I've lifted up some color. This area is a little bit more moist in the center than the outside. So I'm going to let that set up for a minute. It needs to be just a tad drier. Lay the brush down flat so it picks up the amount of water that you want it to pick up and paint. I'm wiping it off in between. Just keep working on it till you get the amount of water and paint out of there. Make sure your edges are covered the way you want them to be. Lifting out that color. Then if you needed to soften this edge a little bit, you certainly could. Just wipe your brush down the edge of it. And it will soften. It's still moist, so it will soften in. So to me, again, let's go over this one more time. Most important part of painting in watercolors is the wet into wet. If you do and learn this correctly, you are going to be able to do so much more with your paintings as far as detail right up front. So laying down your water correctly Getting the right amount of water in there is very important. Making sure that it goes right up to the edge. And I do recommend the blending and glazing medium. It allows you to play with it longer. All of those things are important. Then you get your first color in, pick out your highlights, do your light color first, and then add in your dark colors. And then just blend them gently together and you are going to learn to be able to do so much more with the detail. And when you're blending them together, be sure and follow the growth pattern of that petal. That's very important because it allows you to get 
some of those details in there with very little work basically so the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be wet on dry so keep an eye out for that study that'll be next and I want to thank you for joining me today and don't forget I'm on patreon you'll see me paint this entire rose stroke by stroke on patreon and I'll see you then Thank you so much.